If Texas Tech is to turn their season around, it has to happen this week, and it all starts with the Baylor Bears on Tuesday. Hey, how's it going, everybody? I am RC Maxfield, here for the Back to 12 podcast, reminding you one more time, if you haven't hit that subscribe button, be sure to do so to stay in the know on the latest in Texas Tech athletics from men's basketball, football, baseball, track and field as well, that had a great Great over the weekend competition there at the indoor facility. Softball is not too far in the distant future as well. And we got you covered in everything else when it comes to Texas Tech Athletics. So be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to know the best news and rumors when it comes to Red Raider Nation. All right, let's jump into this as Texas Tech lost to number 10 Texas by 2, 72 to 70 over the weekend. And the big story in this one um, it's Fardaz Amek. Fardaz was a guy that came back and I didn't think he was going to be back this early. I was told that he was going to be back on Tuesday, but hey, when you're in a desperation type mode for your season, you got to do what you got to do. And that's what Texas Tech felt like they were in right there at 0-4 in the Big 12, now 0-5. And now the season really gets now to the nitty gritty because you have legitimately no room for air moving forward. And I'm looking at the schedule now, and we'll go through it in today's video, but it starts with Baylor. That's a must win, obviously. Damn near every home game for the rest of the season is a must win if Texas Tech wants to get to the NCAA tournament or at least have a discussion about being in it. But I do want to talk about kind of what went down against UT, and it was kind of a Interesting game because, again, you did have Fardaz come back, which was a bit unexpected. It happened about, oh, I'd say probably about an hour before game time. People started getting wind in the Texas Tech media that, hey, Fardaz might play tonight. And I want to give credit to Jeff Haxton and Guns Up Radio. They were the first ones that reported it, right? So you look at what Fardaz did to the rotation. And first and foremost, just seeing Bacho, Fardaz, and O'Banner on the floor at the same time, it may not have been the most effective lineup for Texas Tech, but it was kind of fun to see that much length on the floor for Texas Tech. Um, listen, when I look at this Texas game, a couple of things stand out. First and foremost, Jalen Tyson absolutely balled out. 12 and 14. Do I expect him to get 14 rebounds every game? No, neither should you. But I do expect him to get like six, something like that, in that five to six range. And I think Jalen Tyson really got a bunch of confidence going down to a team and a crowd that was really hostile towards him in terms of his situation. Obviously, starting at UT, transferring mid-year last year to Texas Tech, where he was originally committed in high school, and now he's having a pretty solid role for the Red Raiders. I thought it was great for him to have that kind of game. Now, on the negative side, Daniel Bacho, he played bad, like he, he, but he's not going to play that bad again. There's no way... In any scenario, I see that Daniel Bacho is going to score zero points, have one rebound, two assists, and three turnovers, and foul out with 10 minutes left in the game. It's just not going to happen, right? Like, that is going to go down as his worst game of the season and maybe the worst game of his collegiate career for Texas Tech when he has this prominent role, okay? And now there is another positive in this game, and we have to give him his just due because dude is balling out and it's pop isaacs he hides a lot of flaws for texas tech you didn't know what you were going to get with him in terms of everything offensively he's a really crafty offensive guy and i didn't know how that would translate to the big 12 right away but damn it it's seamless right he is a star pop isaac had 23 points shot 7 of 19 5 of 9 from deep made all of his three free throws excuse me had three assists and one turnover, and the turnover he had, I'll say it, it should have been a foul call, but they didn't call it. So I think when you look at Pop Isaac's body of work so far, he should be in that Big 12 freshman of the year conversation. Should he win it? No, you're going to see the Big 12 freshman of the year on Tuesday when Baylor comes into the 806. It's Keontae George, and he's going to be a lottery pick in the NBA draft. But that doesn't diminish what Pop Isaacs has done so far. He is a bona fide star in the toughest conference in America. Now, I do want to talk about the schedule a little bit because I think Texas Tech, again, there's little to no room for air at this point. But before we get into the schedule, I want to hear from you guys. They're 0-5 right now is Texas Tech. Is there a scenario just realistically, right? I don't know if Texas Tech can win out. I think that is a tall task to ask. Probably impossible, right? But how many wins do you think Texas Tech has to have in the Big 12 to make the NCAA tournament? Is it six? 
Is it seven? Do you think they have to be just a game or two under 500 at eight wins, nine wins? What is it? Let me know down in the comments below. All right, let's start with this schedule, though. You play Baylor on Tuesday at home. That is a must win. That is not a hyperbole. That is a fact. That is a must win right there. You need to win basically every one of your home games left on the schedule. Then you go to Kansas State. That's not a must win. That's a very good team that Coach Tang has up there in Manhattan. That's a must win, though, when you face West Virginia next Wednesday, January 25th. You have to win that game. LSU, it'd be nice as a resume builder, but it's really not going to help you too much. Uh, the Tigers aren't that great. Then you play Iowa State at home. Must win. Then you go to Baylor, Oklahoma State. I don't think Baylor's a must win, but it would be nice to win one of these two games against Baylor and Oklahoma State. Then you come home against Kansas State and Texas at home. You need to win both of those games, hopefully, but if you win only one, hopefully both are ranked at that time, that'll help you quite a bit, right? Then you go to West Virginia. You got to sweep West Virginia at this point. And I guarantee you, West Virginia Mountaineers fans are saying the same thing. You got to sweep Texas Tech if you want to make the tournament. Got to beat Oklahoma at home and get that split, or beat Oklahoma on the road, excuse me, and get that split with the Sooners. Then you play TCU. You got to get that split with the Horn Frogs. You're probably not beating Kansas at Allen Fog uh, uh, Fieldhouse, and then Oklahoma State at home, right? So realistically, Baylor that needs to be a win. West Virginia at home needs to be a win. Iowa State at home, borderline, but I'd say probably closer to must win. You need to split with Kansas State and Texas. Let's say you do that. Then you got to beat West Virginia and Oklahoma on the road. You're now at six, six wins in the Big Twelve. I think you got to beat TCU at home. Now you're at seven. Okay. Then you're not going to beat Kansas on the road, I don't think. And if you do, holy crap, right? But Oklahoma State, that gets you to eight wins. It's not impossible. It's just that the room and margin for error is so slim right now, especially with the injuries some of these guys Texas Tech has, right? So first and foremost, you got to get the rotations down. Um, I thought the rotations against Texas were super interesting. Fardos played 29 minutes. That was mostly because Daniel Bacho fouled out. Um, I don't think they wanted to play Fardos 30 minutes in his first game back, but it was damn near a necessity, right? Lamar Washington played nine minutes, and then Williams and Jennings played five minutes combined, four for Williams, one for Jennings. You didn't see Fisher, and you didn't see Walton, right? And to some degree, I understand it, because I don't think that was the game that you needed those two guys. Um because I thought Texas Tech played pretty damn well for a majority of the game outside of a 10-minute stretch in the second half where UT outscored you 20-2, to and that was the true difference in the game. Simple and plain, that's what it came down to. Um, the talent is there, there's no denying it. This team can do what I just outlined right on this schedule. Will they do it? Time will tell. But you're seeing these signs, and it'd be remiss not to shout out shot quality, my friends over there. Um, be sure to go follow them on Twitter. Again, it's at, un, it's at shot underscore quality. I asked them when they talked about Texas Tech, how many wins should Texas Tech, if you go by the data, have in the Big 12? And they said two. You should have beat Oklahoma and you should have beat Texas. Um, according to their data, they had over a 68% chance to beat both of those teams, 72% to beat Oklahoma, and it didn't happen. And here's the narrative that I want to push out there a little bit. How different would we be talking about this team if they were 2-3? and three? It's a big if because I get it. They're 0-5, and a lot of people don't want to hear that. But this team has been so close to beating a couple of great teams. Kansas, TCU, if they don't turn the ball over, and then Texas, Iowa State, you were just getting blown out. But again, if you have one of those wins and you beat Oklahoma, how differently are we talking about this team? And now you get an impact player back in Fardaw's. Do you start to see those things change, right? And Baylor is a big-time game on Tuesday. You have to have a ruckus environment out there in the 806 at the USA because that is a must-win game for Texas Tech in order to get their season back on track. It'll be interesting to see if they do it. Let me know in the comments below if you think Texas Tech does beat Baylor to get their first Big 12 win of the season. I am RC Maxfield. One more time, if you want the latest news and rumors when it comes to Texas Tech athletics, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button to stay in the know right here on the Back to 12 podcast channel.